In the early stages of your life as a fetus, certain parts of your external genitalia were inside your abdomen. As they pushed their way out, they created for themselves this space that we now know as the inguinal canal. It's a space that begins a couple of centimetres above the halfway point of the inguinal ligament, which runs like this. Now, to make it easier to visualise, we've got it here as a rounded cubic prism. The two ends of the canal are called the inguinal rings, superficial and deep. And the contents of the canal are in males, the spermatic cord, and in females, the round ligament. In both, there's the ilioinguinal nerve as well. So let's think about what holds these things in the canal, the walls that mark the edges of the prism. The bottom wall is the easiest to remember. It's the inguinal ligament we mentioned before. The outer or anterior wall is easy to remember too. It's mostly made up of the aponeurosis of the external oblique. The external oblique is the most anterior muscle of the abdominal wall. So you have the anterior wall of the inguinal canal made up by the most anterior muscle. Interestingly, the inguinal ligament is actually just an extension or a continuation of this aponeurosis. Now further out laterally, the anterior wall is reinforced by the next two muscles of the abdominal wall. That's internal oblique, or IO, and transversus abdominis, or TA. For our purposes, these start at the iliac crest, this bony prominence here. They move up beside the external oblique, and then they arch over the top. So what we imagine as the superior wall of the inguinal canal is simply the part of these muscles which is flying free, arcing over the contents of the canal. They end up joining together to make the aptly named conjoint tendon, which inserts onto the pubic tubicle down here. If we take a look around the back now, we can see that the conjoint tendon actually extends down over part of the posterior wall of the inguinal canal. So IO and TA have made this journey from the iliac crest, making up part of the anterior wall, all of the superior wall, and then a little bit of the posterior wall of the inguinal canal. And if we think about it, we've used up all of the abdominal wall muscles now to make up the inferior, anterior, and superior walls. So what else is there between the skin and the abdominal contents? What is going to hold the abdominal contents away from the contents of the inguinal canal? So we've used up EO, IO, and TA in that order from skin to abdomen. And the last layer is not a muscle. It's a layer of fascia called the transversalis fascia. It's the last thing we meet in terms of layers from the skin to the abdominal contents. Interestingly, the deep inguinal ring is actually a hole in the transversalis fascia. So now we've worked all that out, let's take a trip down the canal. We'll hop through the deep ring first, which is a hole in the transversalis fascia. We see in front of us these two muscles that then arc over our heads and make up the superior wall. Okay, those two muscles are transversus abdominis, which I've misspelled here, and internal oblique, medially to that. Further up from them on the anterior wall is the aponeurosis of the external oblique. Keep cruising on down the canal, and we see the transversalis fascia on our left, and then further down from that, we see the end of the posterior wall made up by the conjoint tendon which of course is the joint tenderness insertion of IO and TA. The floor is the inguinal ligament, which is just an extension of the external obliques upon neurosis. And then lastly, to our right, as we finish our journey, we see a hole in the external obliques upon neurosis, the superficial inguinal ring. So through this hole we go. And if it's a male we're in, we hop out that ring and land in the scrotum. And if it's a female, we'll end up in the labia majora. 
All right, so there you go. I hope you enjoyed that little journey through the Inguinal Canal. Thanks for watching. Hit subscribe and we'll see you next time.